Hello YouTube, Chrissy here at A Little Glam, A Lot of Mom. If you're new here, welcome. I'm a homeschool mom of five, ages six to 17, coming up on our seventh year of homeschooling. And on this channel, I share about our untraditional life of learning. Today's video is about a geometry block we just wrapped up. I'm sharing a few of the projects and lessons we worked on during this about three to four week math block. The inspiration for this block started from this resource, Math in the Garden. This resource is no longer in print, but I've received requests to show how we utilize it by a number of people who also own it. There is a geometry shapes section uh, and several activities on finding the shapes in the garden, graphing, journaling, and collecting. We just got done with the first few activities, but then it moves along to the great triangle hunt, planting and eating triangles, geometric windows, angles, finding them, making angles in the garden, and so on, moving on to more geometric shapes. Anyway, let's go back to the first lesson, cross-cut snacks, recommended for ages 5 to 13. In this activity, children are encouraged to eat fruits and veggies that are cut and arranged in a variety of geometric shapes. Then they classify the different fruits according to geometric shapes, recording in their journals the shapes they collected and ate. We're using loose pages that will eventually bind once we feel we've finished with this resource. The next activity is titled Shapes in the Garden for ages 5 to 8, and in this activity, children search for a variety of geometric shapes and garden structures. We made this activity our own, modified for the entire family from Luna age 6 to teens and parents, and we headed to a local garden to look for geometric shapes. Essentially, this became a scavenger hunt in the flora and fauna around us. This work encourages geometric thinking and helps young children develop an understanding of the characteristics and properties of geometric shapes, such as the geometric language, like side, solid, surface, point, straight, curve, and so on. For the teens, this develops in identifying and organizing inf information and looking at everyday sites with a new perspective. We identified shapes like menders, spirals, dendrites, fractals, stripes, and symmetry. Then we journaled. So at home, we reference to our favorite books for illustrative inspiration. Take a look at this cover on Animalium. We see stripes in the tiger, symmetry in the luna moth, tessellations in the snake, concentric circles in the jelly, and spirals in tentacles. Math is living. Fun fact, geometry comes from combining the Greek words earth and metria, measurement. Geometry translates to measuring the earth and land. For our journal entries, we went with simple illustrations representing the shapes we saw. Following drawing books for some illustrations, several were freehanded and a few by using help from the tracing pad. We utilized only pencils so the kids had more control in outlines and small details. They also did so well and used their artistic uh, freedom to choose their color palettes and blending. I also incorporated vocabulary with labeling and definitions. All the young ones practice handwriting. Bella H10 hand wrote all the text while the youngest two wrote the name of each shape but decided to cut and paste the definition. We completed about two shapes per day. So in total, we extended this notebooking work for about a week. And you can see the variations here in their journal entries, uh, the different levels of skills. For another lesson in this block, we tapped into Swirl by Swirl. I know I promised long ago about how I'd plan to utilize this living math book and it took some time to get around to it, but here it is. So first I was inspired by this book to put together a provocation on spirals or also known as an invitation to learn. I pick these rolls of craft paper anytime I'm at Dollar Tree because I like using them for creating provocation spreads. I drew several different size spirals and invited the kids to create spirals with loose parts. I also wrote a few facts and prompts for them to read out loud and answer, such as how many examples of spirals in nature can you list? 
I laid out many options and textiles for loose parts, seashells, buttons, beans, uh, wooden loose part pieces, wool balls, yarn, acorns, and they created. The spread became something of a playmat for small world play, and eventually they created some drawings on it too. In this book there's also a little snippet on the Fibonacci sequence and spiral and so that inspired us to explore it more. I started off with a visual. I found this PowerPoint slide on Teachers Pay Teachers. Nothing too elaborate but a well put together visual aid for our discussion. On several of our walks we kept our eyes open for the Fibonacci sequence in nature. And then back to our journals. kids created a Fibonacci spiral. I did have to modify this activity for my young ones and also we would need graph paper which we didn't have so the kids used a tracing pad and this printable and just some inspiration from uh, some materials we had at home. This is Noah's entry and here is Luna's and you'll see she just made it to the illustration which is far more than I expected for her to participate as this concept is above her skill. And here's Bella's. Besides the spiral we also explored the sequence. I'm sure you're all familiar with how the sequence goes. To get to the next number in the sequence the last two are added and so we pulled a dry erase board out to practice addition and find the subsequential numbers. All right, friends, and that was our living geometry block. The goal of this block was for the kids to understand and accept these mathematical patterns. However, they practiced far more than just math. They developed research and identification and organizing information skills, creativity and developing artistic skills, math vocabulary, copy work, and handwriting. We're paving a path to math with geometric thinking and cultivating their habit of observation of nature. Living math makes sense to kids and it builds concrete understanding to abstract concepts. Mathematics is a living subject and it should be taught through the presentation of living ideas. If you enjoyed this video and if you would like to see more living math ideas videos, please let me know by giving me a thumbs up or dropping a comment down below. Thanks for your love.